Interview and Job Search Strategies That Work. The title of my podcast today is is episode 11, um, as, sorry, episode 12, excuse me. Episode 12 is Candy Bar Method for Managing Tasks. Imagine you have a candy bar in your hand, and on the top it has, you know, chocolate. Uh, then in the middle, it has, like, peanuts or almonds or, oh, man, hell, uh, pecans, pecans, pecans. Um, then caramel, maybe like a, oh gosh, like a wafer bottom, right? Yeah, anyway, so you take the candy bar and you chop it up into pieces and then you chop it down into pieces. And that's all the whole candy bar method, right? So basically, um, you start out your day with like, um, you know, from end to end that's your that represents like your day uh, of tasks your candy bar method and then top to bottom that's like the level of priority or a level of interaction with other people maybe the top one is you need to do it now first the um, the middle one is uh, a team you need team interaction to do it you need help to do it like a task. And then the bottom one is you need uh, maybe re more research. And um, that's worked for me. And hopefully you guys can and can uh, work out for you. Give it a try, you know. Um, the other thing to do is to email yourself the daily tasks. So, for instance, you might put like subject, whatever the day is, and the tasks for that day. For instance, Create a PowerPoint presentation comparing work and office and work from home. Create a video about it. Make a delicious avocado shake. Drink the apple cider vinegar. Uh, trim the hedges along the deck. Uh, set up a new router and create a video about an experience. And then delete 100 emails from my inbox because that is definitely a thing to do. I usually do that on a Friday anyway. Delete like... All, at least 100 emails on Friday. You know, Friday is the delete email day. Um, and the other thing is to design your week. For instance, uh, Monday through Friday, you're working, but you're also doing stuff, so design it. You know, what is your outcome? Why are you doing this? Uh, Monday. Here is my Monday, actually, for work. Uh, Monday, view logs for devices we manage and look for issues. Tuesday, focus on making the documentation more clear and understandable to a 7th grade level. Wednesday, midweek reevaluation re of my tasks and take back my focus. Thursday, focus on my training and improve the skills I have. Technical core, writing. Uh, continue to write out daily tasks and meeting notes. The labeling, continue to label documentation, or sorry, continue to label and document location of all devices we manage. Teaching, schedule a 30-minute session with select team members and talk about the devices we manage. Certifications, what would it take to gain my insert certification? For instance, I'm still after that Elusive CCIE, Cisco Certified Inter Network Expert, and the AWS, that's a new one actually, the Amazon Web Services, so the SysOps, uh, what is that, SysOps Manager, or the Amazon SysOps Manager, I think it is, or SysOps Systems Admin actually, Administrator, that's the one I'm after. And of course, learning Java, learning uh, JavaScript, and other things, but yeah. That, that's kind of my focus. It's, it doesn't always get done, but, you know, that's that's what I write down. And then, first, of course, Friday. Uh, focus on the daily tasks and spend one hour going through Outlook to either remove categories or answer emails and delete emails, of course. Um, an example of, well, I've already went over the email daily tasks, but uh, the other thing I'd like to talk to you about is um, finding a, 
uh, you know, looking for your, your job. So either a full-time office work, um, a telework uh, job, maybe one or two days a week where you work in the office, a uh, full-time work from home job, meaning, you know, and then a business. So I'm just com going to compare the, the, f the four there, right? Um, let's see. So, oh, actually it's one of my tasks. My tasks are full-time where you go to an office, job where you telework one day a week, job where you work from home full-time and a business you can run. So let's compare the two. So let's go first of all by a full-time office. So there are pros and cons, by the way. Uh, working in a full-time office, <laughs> management can see you. Hey, I see you're working. Oh, uh, yeah, whatever, you're working, but they can see you. Oh, you're, you're here, so you're working. You know, that's kind of an archaic. That, that'll get old after a while. I mean, I think the future of work is moving towards more like a work-from-home full-time, trusting your employees, right? That's kind of what it is. But I get it some... Some management, some jobs, they still want you there full time. I get it. The other con, uh, the con to that is driving to work. So you're wasting your time, or not wasting, but you're you're taking your time work driving there, right? Um, so, okay, let's talk about telework. One day, two days, etc. And so the pros are that you only have to go to work those days of the week. So you only have to commute to work one day a week, two days a week, etc. Um, the cons, of course, are time driving to your job. Same kind of deal there. Now let's talk about <clears throat> my favorite, work from home full-time job. Well, second favorite. Business is probably my first, but second. I'm still, I'm so, I'm sort of like a, what do they call it, solopreneur, where I'm doing a full-time gig and I'm also doing like a, trying to do the part-time, you know, job thing where you, at home, work 20 or 30 hours or however long it takes just to learn the skill, uh, learn that whatever it is, talk to people, get get some skills to um, start your own uh, business and whatnot. Anyway, um, so let's talk about work from home full time. So the pros are, of course, no commuting, right? Uh, but there are cons to that is the there are more team meetings. Most likely you're going to have more team meetings because people are going to want to talk about things more often because they can't just come by your office. Hey, how's it going? You know? Um, and of course, business at home, you have your own company, uh, you set your hours, that's the pro and you set your schedule. But the con is there's no guarantee of income. So I like to merge the two, meaning have a, have a job, a uh, full-time job, and then, on the side, just develop whatever uh, company you want. Set up your company, set up an LLC. It's 50 bucks usually, depending on what state you're in. And you can have like a PO box. They're like about 100 bucks a year. And that's your address. And then you, Cricket, I think, not Cricket. One, one of those Grasshopper, I think, is the phone that, you know, you can get like a, a, a your own business line, basically. And your tax ID is free that you get it from the IRS and open up a uh, savings account or checking account rather to bank. It's just tax ID number, <clears throat> a business of business address, and then just, you know, sign it, put some money down a uh, hundred bucks, 200 bucks, whatever it is. I do not recommend bank of America at all. Zero, zero. Um, if you have a credit union, do you already do bank, uh, you know, uh, banking with go with them unless it's bank of america or wells fargo i don't recommend those two at all 100 percent. definitely not bank of america because you know um you walk into bank of america and they got a bunch of people there right like what the overhead is a lot so of course they're gonna have to get the money from somewhere right meaning fees charges overage charges or just fees like okay you only have a thousand dollars in the bank account but your bank account calls for you to have a 5,000. So therefore we're going to charge you money if you don't have so much money in your account, or if you don't make so many, like a business account, I know if you don't make certain, cause we used to have a business account and I got rid of it, of course. But um, if you don't have so much money or you don't have enough deposits, they'll close your account. And I think it works that way as well for business or personal rather accounts as well. 
Um, so I'm not trying to fight a, pick a fight with Bank of America by no means or stretch, but I'm telling you my personal experience on that deal. So take it for what it is. Um, so the other thing is to think about on, on travel uh, money. How much money do you want to work, right? So just I, I created actually a spreadsheet. So I did a, a travel time per week. So I compared the two or the full-time telework one day a week, uh, work from a full-time and then business. I, I did a, a Excel spreadsheet. And I just did on the left column, left-hand column, I had travel time per week, hours worked per week, expenses like gas per year, hotel stay, food per year, internet per year, and typical time spent away from family. And I had, um, you know, the Monday through Friday, and then I had a yearly salary, right? So here's how it, it, go, it goes. For the full-time office, I had the travel time per week as five hours. The hours work per week is 40 hours. The gas per year is 2,400. The hotel stays zero, food zero, internet time zero. So Monday, uh, it was it, your total time away from family, total time spent away from family, nine hours. Monday through Friday, nine hours. Telework one day a week. You have uh, travel time per week is 15 hours. You do work more hours when you work from home, just so you know, 40 to 50 hours. Your gas uh, is uh, 4,000 uh, 4, a year. Well, this is based on like, because if you had a job, say, six hours, set out 10 hours away, seven hours away, this is what I base it on. You had a job, you know, in, I don't know, yeah, like six hours away, basically, you have a job. So that's the gas per year is 4,000. Your hotel stay is is almost 7,000. Your food is about 2,500, and then your internet per year is about 4,500, or um, $450, roughly. So that's if you work um, telework one or two days a week. So Thursday, your time away from your family is is seven hours, and Friday is seven hours as well. So the other thing is uh, work at home full time. So zero hours time spent uh, traveling per week. Hours worked, of course, you're working more hours. You're working from 40 to 50 hours a week. Your gas are zero. Your hotel zero. Your food zero, and your internet per year is about four hundred dollars, roughly. Because of course you're spending internet, right? Because that's you have to have internet. You have to have good internet. Time spent away from family zero hours a week, typical. That's awesome. Now, um, and then of course business that goes without saying. Um, hours per week, sixty plus hours a week, because you know you have full time business. That's typically what you work. Um, you don't want to spend any time away from family if you don't want to. Internet, of course, is four hundred fifty dollars. You know, gas is relative because you can have an, a company, a uh, business at home where you don't have to travel at all. You just sell stuff online, right? So that's and now the salary. I what I did factor in here is the full time salary in the office. So that's fifty grand, and then the telework work per week is forty grand, and then the work from home is thirty thousand. So. It kind of evens out a little bit uh, if you kind of figure the numbers out a little bit. So, for instance, you spend more money in your gas so that, you know, you're working a full-time gig. So you can make less money, uh, 30000 Well, it's little, probably a little more than that. But for that fifty grand a year that you spend working in a full-time office, you're, what, 45 hours a week away from your family? You spend two thousand dollars in gas a year, roughly. Um, it you know that it's you can make less money if you work from home because you don't have those other expenses that are overhead. So, for instance, less to deduct fifty grand from twenty four hundred. That's forty forty seven six, and then forty five hours a week. What is that time worth for you? Because you, if you got that back, what would be worth for you? You know what? How much money is that? costing you to be away from your family and then of course um you know, work from home you can you can have more than one job too by the way it's you could you're home you just have two or three jobs uh, you know so the money is up to you really what you want to do so um those are just some good 
it, it, things that worked for me anyway. Um, I would say that if, if you want to look for, if you're looking for a job, um, like a telework, you just do work from work at home or telework or remote. Those are key words to look for. And even like telework, try to maybe find a job that you travel five or six or 10 hours. Maybe you leave on a Sunday and you're traveling that, you know, 10 hours to a job and then you come back. Gosh, that's just a lot though, right? So you're driving 10 hours. I, I know that sounds a lot, a lot, but you're driving, maybe you do it every two weeks. Um, you know, you travel there once every two weeks or maybe you do five hours. So that's doable. You just say you leave on a Sunday, you're driving five hours, whatever job it is. You, you're you there Sunday, you work, you, you come in early though, right? So you work, you might work 10 or 12 hours that day. So let's, for instance, let's say you work um, six, uh, 12 hours that day, or yeah, better, actually, let's change it up. So you, you, you travel six hours or five hours, and you, you come in the office 6 a.m. and you leave at 2 p.m. So what is that? You don't take a break. You don't take a lunch break. What is that? Six, let's see, that's 2 p.m. So that's six, seven, eight hours. So you're leaving by two. You get home, you know, um, of course, you're going to have a hotel stay. You're still pretty good that way. And then, so the rest of the time, um, you might work over hours. So for instance, um, you could work, you know, ask your boss if you can work 12 hours a day for the rest of the time. And that way, um, you don't have to come in as late. Maybe you can leave Monday. Maybe you can leave on that Monday, maybe you can leave at five in the morning on Monday and get there by 11 a.m. or noon, right? And then you only have to, and then you work two or three hours, let's say, or four hours. You're there four, and you leave at four and you come back. That's night. You get home at nine or 10 p.m. And because you've worked 12 hours a day, Tuesday through Friday, you can do that. So you save money in a hotel cost. That, that does get old after a while. I can guarantee that I know from experience it gets old after a while, but it's doable. Uh, if the money's there, you know, it, like if you don't like where, if you're not getting money where you're at, just, just, you don't have to move, right? Just work out a deal with some company that where you can travel to their location and do the work, you know, and then the rest of the time work from home. But when you, cause when you're there, um, if you're there at a job, you're there, say, three days a week, right? You're going to do less work. I can guarantee you that. Whereas if you're there one day a week, you're going to do everything that one day, you know? And if you're part of a team and you're not critically needed every time there, and it's most of the stuff you can do from from home or working, you know, on a computer, why not just approach your company that way? You know, that most likely they'll say, yeah, okay, go for it. You know, let's do it. And there's also a good chance that they can, they'll reimburse you money uh, for you to travel because they get reimbursed as a company, right? So, or you have your own company and you work uh, a freelance or a consulting gig where your company you work for, you're co uh, sorry, you're, you are a company, you work for another company. You're like a corp to corp or um, 1099, right? And you, your cost is mileage or not mileage. It's uh, upkeep of your car. So um, then there's certain rules that apply when you do the mileage or whatever mileage IQ. But you, you could probably just ask a tax person about that, see how that works. But um, yeah, it's very doable, whatever it is, whatever skill you have. For instance, let's say you live in, gosh, Seven hours to Vegas, I think, from San Diego. It's two hours to L.A. from San Diego. So if you live in San Diego and you work in L.A., that's definitely doable, you know, rather than do the – because I think it's two hours. You're, you're in traffic anyway if you go into downtown L.A., you, you know, an hour easy, right? So what's another hour from San Diego to L.A.? Done. And I think that's like double easy, double the money. For instance, also as well as Austin – from San Antonio to Austin, I think it's like two hours, hour and a half. 
that's tra that's crazy traffic though. Thirty five is just crazy traffic. Maybe from uh, what's another example? Uh, for, well, people in Virginia do it all day. They go to D.C. and to work, so they're making a bunch of money, and then they live in smaller, uh, small cost, you know, lower cost of living. Uh, Minneapolis to Chicago, I think that's like six hours, four hours, six hours. Um, gosh, Kansas City to say Oklahoma City, uh, that's about mm, four or five hours. Um, let's see, Oklahoma City to Dallas. Uh, how far? I think that's a couple. I don't think that's do that's four or five hours right there as well. It's doable either way. So, um, yeah, uh, I know there's some places where you can even travel to, you know, a couple hundred miles, uh, you get on a flight. So you might leave on a s Saturday or Sunday. Of course you, you you're going to have to really get some, get paid for this. Right. But you go somewhere for a week, you stay there a week and then you're off or you're working from home three days a week, what, whatever you want to do, however you want to, you know, gear towards your your company just play the numbers out and you know make it make it beneficial for your company uh as well as you so it's a win-win situation right um yeah awesome okay i appreciate everybody listening to this uh podcast and uh have a great day